All right. So the last ones are dropping in, but I think we can uh, get started. So um, good morning, good evening, good day, everybody, wherever you are on this planet. Uh, thanks a lot for joining uh, the IMDb Races um, launch webinar. So if you didn't hear it uh, already, today was the big day where we launched our managed service. Um, and um, today um, uh, we will share a few details about the managed service, uh, what you can expect from it. Uh, we have um, our team lead, um, an architect of Oasis here, um, who will introduce you to, to the service and the capabilities. Um, uh, he's also, um, I think, the more important uh, person than me. Um, just want to give you a quick introduction. So, um, quick agenda for today. Um, I think uh, if you have such a big, a big release, uh, then it's also interesting to see a bit um, how we got there, how we um, uh, could build the um, uh, managed service for HangDB. Um, then, of course, what it actually is, what, can, what it can do for you, um, um, how, how to handle it, uh, which capabilities and features are supported, um, what we have today, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, what lies ahead for the managed service. This is the first release, uh, and we already have a few uh, things to announce for the very near future. And of course, um, we will then uh, dive into uh, the demo time and uh, actually show you how it works. So just quick two sentences about me. I'm uh, Jan Stücke. I'm the marketing lead uh, here at HangoDB and accompanied uh, the whole HangoDB Oasis project uh, from a product marketing and community side. Um, but as I said, um, the more important person um, here is for sure our um, architect and team lead. So maybe, about would you like to uh, say a few things about yourself? Um, and then I would say we can, we can dive in. Sure, or you uh, take the timeline first and then I'll introduce myself. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Wonderful. All right. Um, Quick some housekeeping. Um, you have a, um, a QA and a um, functionality here. We have a chat. Uh, we will monitor both. Uh, and uh, of course, if you have any questions, uh, just uh, let us know in the chat, uh, and we will um, then answer all of your questions um, either right away in the, in the chat or in the QA, or then after uh, uh, at the end um, uh, live here in the webinar. And uh, as many people asked already, yes, there will be a recording and everyone uh, who signed up for the webinar will of course uh, get the uh, webinar recording sent to. All right. So how did we get here? Uh, how did we um, get to Oasis? Uh, so many of you might know that uh, the first uh, 1.0 release of RMDB was in 2012. And a lot of things uh, happened there for uh, or until uh, uh, since then. So for the Oasis part and the distributed part, I think the most important uh, release was the RMDB 3.0 release back in 2016, where we introduced basically complete new uh, cluster management. Um, so it was a self-healing cluster, self-managing cluster. Uh, we introduced the agency who keeps the state of the cluster in check. Um, and um, uh, allows for fault tolerancy um, and uh, all these nice things. With, with the uh, RMDB 3.1 release, uh, we then uh, built smart graphs. Um, for those who don't know smart graphs yet, smart graphs is a solution how to, uh, that allows for, um, as the name says, smart sharding of uh, graph data. Uh, so you can have uh, local performance even for very large data sets distributed uh, to a cluster and sharded to a cluster. Um, with the 3.2 release, we then um, released satellite collections. Um, as the name says, you have um, small collection uh, orbiting uh, the shards of a, um, shard, a large sharded collection. So you can also have their local, uh, local join operations. So you get uh, also um, very fast um, join operations um, uh, when you have one collection that is sharded and smaller collections you want to join um, this uh, large collection with. Um, then Arango Search with the uh, 3.4 release, 
Um, we directly took on uh, the challenge to make it uh, cluster ready. Um, so you can also work with uh, very large um, uh, data sets where you want, uh, that you want to search on with Arango Search. Um, so on many sites, on many uh, data models and, and access patterns, uh, we support this, uh, of course, also in a, uh, in a cluster setting and for distributed data. Then at the beginning uh, of 2018, we uh, began the work on the Kubernetes operator. And um, Ebert was the lead architect uh, of, uh, of uh, the uh, Kubernetes operator, um, also including all the, at that time, the cutting edge features like um, um, persistent volumes and uh, all the other um, things that a database needs when uh, ran in, uh, in an orchestration system like uh, Kubernetes. And we um, improved uh, also on, uh, on that front a lot. And with the last release, um, or the most recent uh, major release of ArangoDB, we introduced smart joins, um, where you can um, uh, then um, shard two um, large collections um, and shard it also in a way that you can um, uh, that uh, join operations can also run locally on each DB server. So a lot uh, happened um, um, since we released um, ArangoDB 3.0 over the past few years. And um, all this uh, led then uh, to the final release of ArangoDB Races today. So all the features that you see here, like smart graphs, satellite collections, Arango search, smart joins, and all of uh, the other features that you know from ArangoDB and the, uh, the Enterprise uh, Edition are also um, per default uh, accessible in uh, ArangoDB Races. So um, the ArangoDB Races runs the Enterprise Edition per default. So, but before we dive in, um, uh, I want to share a few, a few stats. So we start the pre-release um, uh, of Oasis in June. And uh, I'm just pretty amazed that uh, nearly um, a thousand people already signed up for, uh, for Oasis um, and the pre-release. Um, that was mind blowing, to be honest. Um, and um, I want to also thank um, especially all the pre-release testers. Um, Thank you so much. It was really a big, big, uh, big, big help for us uh, getting um, talking to you what uh, what you want to see in the managed service, um, testing all the uh, all the um, uh, iterations we had, um, giving us feedback. Um, that was uh, really a big, big thanks. So thanks for everybody uh, um, uh, investing their time and helping us build something uh, that uh, that hopefully is uh, is uh, something uh, useful and valuable for for everybody. All right, um, that's for the quick introduction. Um, now I'd like to hand over to um, Ewald. And just let me a second. Where are we here? Click here. So, all right, uh, Ewald, your turn. <laughs> okay, let me turn on my video. No, I cannot. You have to stop. Yep, on my way. Okay, good. Um, welcome everyone. Um, first of all, um, thanks to uh, uh, Jan for the introduction. Let me share my screen, then you can see uh, what's going on. Um, okay, so about myself. Uh, Jan already uh, told a little bit uh, about the history of um, OrangoDB. Um, my history inside OrangoDB is just a little bit shorter than that of Jan. Um, I have been involved in lots of different projects um, outside the database. Um, so I've re been responsible for um, the initial design of the Kubernetes operator, the starter, and all the way back to the Go driver even, uh, which we're still using actively um, to this day. Um, and for the last year, uh, we have been working with a very dedicated team, very hard on what we now call uh, ArangoDB Oasis. And before I would like to dive into that, um, maybe we should take a tiny sidestep uh, to do, talk a little bit about um, the name, because when you start such a project, one of the things that you obviously want to know is, okay, how is this going to be called? And um, 
we I think that we passed somewhere like 50 names before we ended up like, hey, this is great. So we envisioned the palm tree, um, we envisioned um, the avocado uh, logo and merged it a bit, and now it is a remedy the oasis. Um, so let's take a step back and let's just describe the life. I assume that the majority of our listeners uh, today are uh, developers or operations. And I just want to dive with you in a typical um, discussion, um, which you could have had before Oasis. And then it could be something like, hey, um, I found this great database. It's really nice. Um, it's very fast, handy, multimodal, all that stuff. It's great. Now let's run it on AWS. Okay, fine, let's do that. But then of course you have to do a lot. Um, you have to start your virtual machines. Well, that's relatively easy nowadays. Um, get the OS up and running, uh, download and install OrangoDB. And then somebody says, well, you installed it, now you're done. Um, unfortunately, no. And um, we developers know what um, else is there to do other than um, just install that stuff. At some point, you want to be able to run it and to monitor it, and you have to think of backups, et cetera. And all that takes a lot of time and a lot of energy, um, and it takes away from the thing that you just want to do, and that is concentrate on your own application. So this was before Oasis. So let, now let's look at um, what you could now do with Oasis. You could have the same line of reasoning, but it's so much easier because somebody, uh, let's say your manager says, okay, let's decide to use ArangoDB, let's run it. And then you go to Oasis and you just spin it up. And within anywhere from five to 15 minutes, you just have your database up and running and you're done. Um, it's that simple. And um, Jan already uh, thanked all our uh, pre-release customers. And um, I would like to second that because um, all you guys out there have been absolutely very helpful for us. And we have done a lot of discussions. And the thing that was coming back in every discussion that we had with customers was, um, I just want to run this damn database. It's great, but just make it easy for me to run it. And I don't want to be bothered with that stuff. So please do it for us. Um, and actually, that's exactly what uh, Oasis is. So let's talk about what Oasis is. Um, in one line, Oasis is your ArangoDB database or your ArangoDB cluster to be precise in the cloud. Um, it's that simple. And of course, there are lots of things that we can add to it and contribute to it. But in the end, we just run ArangoDB for you in the cloud. And we don't run it on some obscure uh, server rack somewhere. It's just your everyday um, cloud providers that you already uh, are familiar with at the moment that is um, Google and AWS. Um, and um, we also let you decide where you want to run this thing because we know that um, location matters also in the cloud. Um, so you decide, I want to run it in say Ohio, or you want to run it in London or Frankfurt, or um, we have several regions uh, already more to come. Um, and we make sure that we spin up an ArangoDB deployment for you. Um, and then we make sure that um, you don't have to worry about it. So we make sure that the thing keeps running. We have 24 uh, seven monitoring on it. Um, if there is any ever an issue with a um, availability zone in one of the regions, uh, we will just pick that up and make sure that your database keeps running. And that's of course where uh, having an ArangoDB cluster is very helpful because it allows you to be a bit more flexible in that. And it also allows you to be very scalable, um, which in nowadays we have talked from customers ranging from, um, let's say a few thousand documents to millions and millions of documents. Um, and even if that's more millions of graph documents, um, then uh, scale really, really matters. And I'm forgetting one very, for me, obvious um, uh, aspect here, and that is security. Um, I think that um, marketing, uh, Jan already wrote in, in a blog post that I always mention uh, 2019. Um, I'm, so today I'm stepping one step further and saying, well, it's almost 2020. 
Um, so let's be prepared for that. So it has to be secure. Um, and um, we'll see in a minute what that actually means. And last but not least, um, I think it's very important to note that RMDB Oasis is not some side project by whoever is doing this. This is done from inside RMDB itself. Um, the entire team is uh, dedicated RMDB engineers, um, fully qualified to work on these cloud infrastructures. And we have the, the best uh, lines to the core engineers of the database that you can imagine. So there we can optimize things um, for every cloud and make sure that it runs in an optimal way for you. Okay, so let's take a step and say, now what is a deployment? Because we use the word deployment in many cases. Um, and in this case, an Aurora deployment is a instance of ArangoDB running on Oasis. And it is a highly available cluster. And it comes in a number of different deployment models. Um, We'll dive into the models uh, later on. Um, these models are intended to optimize for certain use cases. Um, and um, we'll see how that maps. Um, Jan already spoiled that um, we are running the enterprise version. Um, so that means that you get all the nice goodies of the enterprise, like all the smart graphs and joins and full encryption and you name it. Um, it's already there and you don't have to worry about it. Um, and last but not least, um, it is running in uh, the cloud provider near you. So if you have already your application running on, say, Google, um, just select Google and your data is very close to that. Let's dive a bit into the models. Um, the reason we have introduced um, deployment models is that we see very different um, use cases for our database. and um, the database that we have is um, very flexible. You can optimize it in various ways. And we know that if you have, for example, a typical graph use case, that you want to set it up in a different way than if you have a pure key value store or you have a very large scalable document store as your use case. Um, in order to uh, optimize for that, um, we have you covered with two basic models. One, the first is the, is the one shard. And the one shard is a um, cluster um, which is single sharded, um, which means that in the end, your data set has to fit on a single machine, um, but it is replicated. So you have your high availability, you have your durability of data, um, but the way we can organize that data in the cluster means that it is optimized for graph traversals, lookup, et cetera. Um, and of course, it's still completely vertically scalable. So you can go from a small cluster, um, which has uh, four gigs of memory per node, all the way to 512 uh, gigs of, of memory, depending on your cloud provider. The second model that we have is the so-called sharded model. Um, and the sharded is, again, replicated. Um, and it allows you to uh, shard your collections, which means that um, all the data in the collection does not have to fit on a single uh, machine anymore. It can fit on as many as you need, and you can scale all the way from uh, three to 10, 15, 20 nodes, just how many you need. Um, it can grow uh, tremendously. Um, of course, it can still scale vertically as well. So if you want, you can optimize for memory, you can optimize for disk, and you can fit in there um, various combinations that you want. Um, we have a third model that I haven't mentioned, and that is we know that there are ArangoDB experts out there that just want to control everything themselves. Um, we got you covered, talk to us, and we allow you to do that. Um, we don't give that to um, customers by default um, because we optimize these uh, models uh, for them. Uh, but if you're really an expert and you say, I think I know better than you guys, please come and talk to us and we can help you there. So I already talked about security. Um, security is absolutely paramount. Um, so what does that mean in reality? Um, for Oasis, it means a couple of things. Uh, first of all, there is encryption everywhere. So 
please don't come to us and say, I don't like that we, I have to use TLS um, because we're not going to turn it off. This is 2020, um, you just have to deal with um, TLS. Um, with modern day um, CPUs, um, that's not really an issue anymore, thank God. Um, so we can use that. Um, and we use encryption in two places. First at rest, which means that all the data that gets stored on disk is encrypted before it even hits the disk. And the second is in transit, which means that all your network traffic is using uh, TLS. Um, if you see a deployment and says, hey, um, my certificate is not uh, recognized. That's true. These are self-signed certificates. There is a mechanism to update, etc. cetera. Um, and we do that um, to make sure that you have full control over it. And we give you some guidelines of how you can install it in your browser so you can easily work with it. The second point is IP whitelisting. Um, obviously, um, a database is not a proper database without proper uh, authentication in it. Uh, but still, you want to prevent that anybody from any location can access your data. So IP whitelisting is just a fancy name for uh, firewalling. Um, and you give us a range of um, either IP addresses or um, IP ranges. And we make sure that your database is only accessible from uh, those IP addresses. Um, and last but not least, um, you also want to control who has access to your deployments, um, who can make a deployment, who can remove a deployment. You want to avoid that just your average day uh, uh, Joe can say, okay, now I don't like this deployment anymore, now let's get rid of it. That would be a bad thing. So there is access control in place and we have made it such that um, you can go from a very small organization to a very large organization and Oasis adapts to your needs there. And then, of course, in the end, you want to have your data backup. And one of the things that Jan didn't tell in his timeline is that in the ArangoDB 3.5 release, um, we also included one heck of a backup feature, um, which is uh, called Hot Backup. Um, and it allows you to take extremely fast snapshots of your data. That still doesn't mean that your data is safe in case, um, let's say the, the, the data center burns down, um, but it is extremely fast. So what Oasis does is it builds on top of that and says, okay, we are going to take these extremely fast snapshots. Um, and then if you want, um, we are going to upload that into a safe location. So that is S3 for um, Amazon, that is GCS for Google and so on. Um, but you don't have to do that. So for example, a scenario is possible where you can say, um, I am trying, want to test something out. I just take a snapshot. I do my test. I don't like it. I can very quickly go back um, to the previous snapshot and I don't have to spend any um, time and money uploading uh, this data. Um, it's just there. The way it works also makes sure that it doesn't, uh, with the exception of a few bytes, doesn't cost you anything extra in terms of disk space. Um, and again, I cannot um, uh, estimate enough how fast it is, and that makes it really nice to work with. Um, you can back up that manually. You just can just hit a button and say backup now. Um, but you can also do that policy-based. And we have things like daily or weekly, and you can say, I only want it on Friday, or any uh, the, the typical policies that you can imagine. And both with the manual backup uh, as well as the policy, you have options for, do you want to upload it, yes or no? And you also have options for your retention period. Um, so we will clean up things automatically for you um, if you want that. Um, for, snap, uh, for backups that are not uploaded, uh, the retention period is automatically a lot shorter um, because you want to, uh, at some point, make sure that you have a safe copy of your data uh, somewhere. So we have a, a mechanism in there as well. Um, and the good news is that with these backups, one of the features that is coming in the future is that we also make it possible to restore from a existing backup into a completely new deployment, for example. 
I already mentioned, we are dealing with um, customers uh, large and small. Um, so you either have a, let's say, startup with a couple of people and you want to make it easy to work with. But at the other side of the scale, you also have companies who are very big and have teams and locations in mul uh, multiple geographical, uh, diverse locations, if necessary. Um, and you want to match Oasis to these different types of organizations. So what we did is we added a um, structure in which all our deployments are organized. And that structure is a, essentially a tree that starts with a organization. An organization is typical, typically a company. Um, and an organization contains members, so people in the end. And within a organization, um, you can structure things using projects. And a project is anything that matches an entity within your organization. So it can be a team, it can be a application, or you can even say you have a staging environment, a staging project and a production project. No matter what mapping you want, you can use a project for that. And this tree structure not only makes it possible to better organize your stuff. So obviously, if you just run one deployment, there's not a lot of need for structure. But what if you want to run 30 deployments? You can with Oasis. So um, then you probably need some structure in that. And the same structure is also used for access control. So if a user of an organization um, if a user is a member of the organization, you can, by the way, be a member of multiple organizations at the same time. If you're a member of the organization, it could very well be that you have certain rights in um, the first project, but you don't have rights in the second project, or you have read rights in project A and you have read write uh, rights in project B, whatever um, you decide. We have a mechanism there, which is very similar to um, what you already know from um, the uh, IEM structures of um, popular cloud providers. Um, we have something very similar to that. And you can organize it completely the way you like it. So what is the getting started? Uh, what does it look like to get started with Oasis? Um, we try to make it as easy as possible for you to get started from nothing uh, to a running deployment um, within 15 minutes or so. In order to do that, um, you need to register on Oasis. Um, so the typical um, username, password, or a Google GitHub account, something like that. And then we ask you to um, send, um, enter your mobile phone number because we are going to send a verification code to you. Um, rest assured, we are not going to use that mobile phone number for anything else. Um, so don't worry that you get a sales guy on the line with that phone number. We only use it to verify the fact that you're human essentially. And then you create your organization and project. Um, you're just asked to enter a name uh, for both and you can start um, your first deployment. Um, create, um, it will be created for you automatically, a TLS certificate, install it, and you can try Oasis uh, for free for 14 days. Um, within these 14 days, there is absolutely no obligation whatsoever to use it, you also do not need a credit card in order to do that. You can just try it out. If you don't like it, um, your deployment will expire, meaning be removed within 14 days, and you will get a warning uh, seven days uh, before that. Um, but if you say, okay, now I like it and I want to go further, or I don't like the limitation that we have because our free to try is limited in size, um, I want to go further, um, then you enter your credit card information um, and you go from what we call free to try to professional. Um, as soon as you do that, um, your expiration counter stops. So you can start by just trying out um, Oasis, put some nice data in it, and then decide, okay, this is great. I want to use it. Enter your credit card information and just continue with the same deployment you already have. There's no need to create a new one. You could if you want, but there's no need for that. Um, and then suddenly um, the limitations are, I would say, mostly gone. Uh, you can launch a heck of a number of deployments, um, but if there are any special needs, uh, feel free to contact us and we can make uh, separate arrangements 
with you. So in the end, um, all these goodies are of course going to cost something. So let's talk about uh, pricing. Um, and we'll show in the demo a bit what it looks like. Uh, for now, I want to concentrate on how this works. Um, most important, um, there are two, um, two pr uh, primary uh, elements of the price. One is a deployment price per hour. Um, that is based on the size of your deployment. It's based on um, the location of your deployment. Um, and then we give you a price per hour um, and we just calculate the number of hours um, that you're there. And if you stop it, um, it's fine. This is not a requirement that you need to run it for so many hours or whatever. You can even run it for five minutes if you want, and you will be charged for that. In addition to that, there are some variable costs. Um, and um, there are two variable costs. One is network transfer. Um, anyone familiar with cloud providers uh, knows that they don't do anything for free um, except ingress um, traffic. Um, so, um, and, and we do the same. Um, your traffic uh, will be priced. Um, same is true for back storage. Um, here it's important to note that um, we don't charge you for a backup um, that is not uploaded. So if you want to just quickly try and say, okay, you want to have a backup because I want to test it. And I, I think this snapshotting feature is great. So just give it a try. Uh, I want to test something with my data. And if I don't like it, I can quickly go back to it. You can just make a backup. Um, don't check the upload uh, option. Um, and it's going to cost you absolutely nothing. Um, the final part of the pricing is uh, the support. Um, for every deployment, you choose a support plan and that support plan, um, there's default is the basic support and standard support. And based on that, you get different um, levels of response times uh, from us. Um, it's not required to have all your deployments with the same support. So if you say, I have a staging deployment and I have a production deployment, it's perfectly fine to make your staging deployment, um, just use basic um, support plan and then the production, which is more critical, of course, uh, get, a, get a higher uh, support plan. We also have um, uh, some premium plans. If you say, okay, I, I'm, I need even better response time than that, talk to us and um, we can uh, deal with that. Now, I've talked about what Oasis is now. Um, before I go into the demo, I want to quickly talk about uh, what's coming next. And um, I think the primary thing to note here is that we value your input on this very much. So everything that I have on this slide um, is already something that we want to do, but we know that there are definitely more feature requests out there, certainly more feature requests than we can handle at this time. but we want to get your feedback on what you value is important because in the end we can uh, very quickly, it is a service so we can quickly switch to that. Number one on our list at the moment, um, I must say by very high popular demand is support for Azure. Um, that is something that is coming soon um, and um, it will uh, have all the same uh, features that you now have with Google and, uh, and AWS, so it's also the, the backup and all the deployments in your multiple regions. Um, it's pretty much the same as what we already have. It's just, um, if you prefer to run things on Azure, um, you can do that. And then um, something that is already very much requested by our pre-release customers is um, more regions. Um, we have already added uh, one recently, um, and we expect to add more regions. Um, and certainly for the regions, um, your um, opinion counts very much. Um, so for us, it's relatively easy to add more regions, but at the same time, it doesn't make a lot of sense to add a region if nobody's going to use it. Um, so we want to get your feedback on that. So let us know, send us a support request and say, please add region X, Y, Z, and we'd be more than happy um, 
to uh, put them all in a spreadsheet and then at the end of the month we say okay this one is the one that we're going to add now uh, or these ones because it's probably going to be multiple and then there are also not only regions we know that um, of course we have the big three uh, cloud providers then but there are more out there um, we were slightly surprised but also pleasantly surprised that uh, when we did a poll earlier this year where we asked you what was the cloud provider that you want to run on um, we weren't that surprised that aws was by far the number one um, but we were a bit surprised that um, something like digital ocean was actually pretty high on the list um, and there are nowadays more cloud providers out there. We know that IBM has a cloud and there are many others um, that uh, are definitely interesting for us. And as long as the technology is there and the demand is there, we want to go there because we feel that Oasis should be there where the customer needs it to be. So let us know and we love to uh, help you with that. Um, also, what's coming next and relatively soon also is um, uh, more metrics and better ways of inspecting your uh, database. Um, right now, we collect a lot of uh, metrics that we use to monitor your database for you, but um, we also want to bring some of those um, metrics uh, in a more accessible way to um, you as a developer or, a, or as an operations guy um, so you can monitor um, not only, let's say, the database, because in the end, um, we do that for you, but you can also get more inside information in how is your database operating and where are my slow queries and how can I optimize, things like that. Um, and we want to make it much easier for you to, uh, to do that. And a very big one, um, which we like very much, to be honest, is uh, a scriptable API. Um, Oasis, uh, is, as you look at it today, we, you, it looks like, hey, there is this web service, it's great, a nice UI, great. Um, but actually, underneath, there is a complete gRPC-based API. Um, and pretty soon, we are going to open up that uh, API uh, for you guys to work with. Uh, we will definitely start with a command line tool, which we call Oasis CTL. Um, and you can do everything that you can in the dashboard also with the command line tool and you can script everything. Um, and we're looking, we're also looking very hard and I don't know if it's going to be in the same time frame, but hopefully certainly later, we want to have a Terraform plugin. Uh, we are very big fans of Terraform. And um, although we don't use that much um, inside Oasis, we want you to be able to spin up a deployment with Terraform as well. And I already spoke a bit about the option of taking a existing uh, deployment or more precisely backup of a deployment and then spin up a new deployment from that. So that is cloning a deployment from an old backup. Um, but we also want you to easily clone a existing deployment just like that and say, okay, create me one here. Um, for example, uh, you want to clone your production data set um, so you can test around in a more safe environment with it, or you want to have a backup or anything else. And last but not least, and I think that is a very important feature which uh, we have already uh, heard a lot of people of OU uh, would like that, and that is to easily be able to migrate from provider A to provider B or region A to region B, no matter what um, complicated or um, scenarios you want to have there. Um, we don't want you to have a login and say, I have to stay with Google my entire life, or I have to stay with AWS my entire life. If you want to change it, um, we uh, provide exactly the same functionality and we make it very easy for you with just a few clicks of the button to move your entire deployment um, easily without a lot of hassle on your side. So all that said, let's have a look at how it looks. So now I need to uh, do a new sharing. Okay, so I, yes. Um, let's look at Aramidb Oasis. 
Um, you go to cloud.rangdb.com um, and we have, give you some additional information, of course, and we just log in. And with the login, um, I'm already signed up, so you can log with the username password. I'm going to log in now with my uh, Google account. And here you come in the um, dashboard of Oasis. And you can see here we have uh, the potential for multiple organizations. We have multiple projects, as I already described, and we have access control and some information of the organization. But let's start with the most uh, important part. And that is, of course, we want to have a deployment. Um, you can see I already uh, created one before, but let's create another one. Um, so I am going to, we're very big fans of names, so you have to give everything a name and then you can just choose from a provider and you choose from a region. I'm now going to take a region close to me and you can select the ArangoDB uh, version um, that you want. Um, I can tell a little bit about that. Um, what we will do is we will, um, as database versions, ArangoDB versions progress, we will offer you more and more versions, but we believe that it is relevant that you decide at which time you want to switch to a new version. So there will definitely be cases where we say, we think it's now time to um, say goodbye to this old version for security reasons or any other reason uh, that we find, uh, say it's now really not possible to, uh, to support that anymore. But then still we give you the time, um, we notify you, you have a week uh, uh, to move to a new version. If you don't do it, we will still do it for you, but um, we want you to do it in the best time that you have. Changing a version is actually extremely easy. You just click another version and hit save and in the background it will be done automatically for you and your data is still uh, available. Let's move on. I had my uh, certificate um, and I can select an IP whitelist at the moment. I'm not going to do that. I don't care about it that much. And then I choose one of my models. So I have one shard or I have sharded. Um, for the sharded, we also have a wizard that can help you uh, decide what the best um, uh, size of your deployment is. Um, I recommend to just play around with that. Um, but for now, let's keep it very simple. Just make it sharded and say, let's make um, a small one and select how much uh, data I want. And the sliders you see here are sliders uh, per node. Um, now for those of you who are familiar with, let's say the internals of RhymoDB, then we're talking about things like coordinators and database servers, et cetera. But within Oasis, we don't want to make it that hard for you and say, okay, it's just a node and you can store your data in here. You can see what your application factor is, the amount of memory that will be used for everything, um, for the quick calculators here. Um, this is slightly bigger than you would, would expect with a factor of three or four uh, gigs, but we also have something like an agency and we show that uh, to you in here as well. And then we tell you what this deployment is going to cost you uh, per hour. And then we say create. And what is now happening um, is that now um, in the back end in a, a data center, in uh, Eenshaver, which is in the north of the Netherlands, um, a, a deployment is being spin up um, as we speak. Um, and um, that usually takes anywhere from two to uh, 10 minutes, depending a bit on how uh, busy the system is and how much uh, scaling has to be done there. Um, and you can see in the meantime that it is already uh, doing something here. I can follow the progress and I can see what it is spinning up. You don't have to worry about exactly what this means. This is just the elements of your database. Um, and it's already um, uh, moving, uh, moving that database and um, spinning it up as we speak. So let's come back on this one later. You can see here it's bootstrapping. 
for now I'm going to use this one which is already uh, spun up and I can see here that I can open my database um, and if I open my database I end up with the familiar uh, website of the database I have here a root password that we provide for you and um, you can log in and you have just your uh, standard RoundedDB database. Now there are a couple of things here to note. First of all, um, note that you get a DNS name uh, for every uh, deployment. That is completely random, um, so good luck guessing that. Um, um, but it is uh, you don't have to worry that uh, for this provider it is based on IP addresses. For other providers, it's based on C names, whatever we have uh, that shielded off from you. And um, you can just work with a standard endpoint um, that we give you. We give you here the endpoint. We uh, can show you or just copy the root password. And we also have some uh, tricks here um, to help you get started with that. So we have a couple of uh, examples here in uh, popular uh, languages. Um, even have PHP in here and Java, and you can copy this code. And with the exception of putting in the password, you can literally, sorry, run this example right away and uh, get started with it. So for those who find it a bit tricky um, to work with uh, TLS settings of your driver, use this um, dialog because it will show you exactly how to do it. Of course, there is also the possibility to import data. And we say, okay, you can import from existing an existing RoundDB database. So let's say that you have a database running on your desktop or on, on the cloud already, and you want to move that into uh, Oasis, uh, we give you the commands um, uh, to do that. Uh, it's very easy to get started with it. Now let's move on um, to the backups. Um, of course, we have the option to create a backup now. So let's do that. I can give it a description. I don't have to. I can say I want to upload it, yes or no. And then we just say um, create it. Um, and anywhere between um, a few seconds and uh, uh, two minutes, um, the backup is done. Um, doesn't mean that that is already uploaded then. The actual upload is usually taking the majority of time. Um, and there is also a slight delay between I give the command here uh, versus the command actually be executed on the platform. But as soon as it's there, then um, it goes very quickly. There it is, it's already uploading at the mass we speak. I can also, um, make a policy um, and in the policy I can do things like hourly or daily or monthly and you just describe uh, what you want. I strongly recommend just play around with it. Um, this is all available in the, in the free to try with the exception of, of uploading. Um, you can easily play around with it. Um, let's go back to our deployments. So the one that we just started up is now here already. We created it five minutes ago. And if I now go to this, um, I can already see that the deployment is there. If for whatever reason, um, which is certainly um, happening more often if you launch something on AWS, um, it could very well be that it takes um, anywhere from a few minutes to even 30 minutes before the DNS name is completely resolved. Um, the actual DNS name is there within seconds, um, but we know that there are a lot of um, caching DNS servers um, in between um, the cloud and you in many cases. Um, and if that caching is um, not as fast as it could be, um, it could take a while and um, I, uh, ask you just wait wait for it or refresh your DNS. Usually it's sufficient to uh, reset your Wi-Fi, for example, and then uh, you already have it. Um, now, if I don't like this database anymore, it's very simple. I can just throw it away. Um, 
I'm asked to confirm that I really want to do that and the database is going uh, to go away. Um, in the meantime, let's have a look at the other things that we have here. We have um, members of the organization, um, which you can add. We have groups, we have uh, roles, um, and I need to explain that a bit. Um, members and groups is usually relatively easy. Members is just people and groups is groups of people. And roles and policies is where it becomes a little bit more complex. Um, as I already mentioned, our system is fully API based and all the APIs needs permissions. And these permissions are very low level things. Um, they are strings. Um, you can see them, uh, but you don't want to use them because there are way too many and it's just not fun to work with. So we envisioned a system of uh, roles and with roles is a list of permissions and it's much easier to deal with it that way. And we have defined a lot of uh, predefined roles for you. So you can see uh, them here. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, deployment administrators, deployment viewers, uh, group administrators, and so on. And all of these um, roles um, can be used in a policy. And a policy is something that you decide on every level. So we are now looking at the policy for um, the entire organization, but I can also go to the policy of um, a project and I can even go into um, the policy of a deployment. And there is an inheritance. If you want to know the details, go into the documentation and you will find um, all the details in there. Last but not least, uh, how to get members into your organization. Very easy. Just put an email address and a person gets an email saying, you're invited to join this organization. Do you want to do that? Yes or no. And then it's up to the user to decide whether he accepts um, that invite. Good. Um, last but not least, one tiny thing I want to show about the certificates. We know that working with certificates is just not fun. So we try to make it a bit easier and give you all the instructions how to install it on your favorite um, operating system um, so you can easily work uh, with that. If you want to have the complete key, uh, obviously that's the public key, you can get those as well. Good. Um, let me switch back. That was the demo. I strongly recommend that you just sign up for Oasis and give it a try. And now it's time for questions. Thank you very much. So let's see where the chat is. Where is my... All right. Um, thank you, Ivo. Um, thanks a lot for, for, uh, for this great demo and, uh, and um, um, the great introduction to Oasis. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Uh, you can see that when you go to the Q&A tab, there at the moment uh, we have four. So the first one is if uh, deploy uh, when deployments are built hourly. Um, so um, one user is asking if they then can also pause the deployment um, so that they are not built uh, during the pause status. Is this possible? At the moment, no. It's a very good question and we would love to have it. And we have already discussed uh, a lot how we would do it. Um, and I do believe that we will do it at some point, but um, fortunately there is no ETA for that yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next question um, is of course about pricing. Um, so the question is if we also will um, uh, or if we also have a plan to accommodate um, smaller uh, use cases that only need one or two gigabyte of memory, um, so very uh, low cost, low resources um, uh, form of deployment. Um, can you um, expand on this uh, a bit? Sure. Um, there are no plans to go smaller than what is called our A4 uh, node. Um, and the reason for that is um, that um, we are running a cluster and it is um, in order to make it run um, 
properly uh, with the, the, the right performance, um, you nowadays need memory to cache your data. Um, so technically, we would be able to give you smaller deployments, um, but that would uh, result in uh, a bad user experience in terms of performance, and we just don't like to give you that. All right. Um, so the next one um, is about uh, if we have uh, documented uh, SLAs. Um, so as far as I know, please correct me if I'm wrong, if you uh, check out the terms and conditions that are um, accessible um, uh, on our website. So if you go to cloud.rangedb.com um, and click on um, uh, sign up you don't have to sign up of course you can see the terms and conditions before you do anything um so there you can uh, yeah, see yeah. the terms and conditions and uh, as uh, eva was uh, currently showing uh you can also see the support plans that are currently available with our devices all right um then another question also uh, also great questions uh, like the others before um, if one can change the size of a deployment? So yeah, that's, you... a, that's a very good question. Um, yes, you can. Um, I think that's a very important one. You can scale, uh, depending on your model, you can either scale uh, vertically as well as horizontally, or you can scale only vertically. So one shard can only scale vertically. You can change memory, you can change disk. Um, the only limitation at the moment is that uh, you can scale down memory, you cannot scale down disk. Um, you can scale uh, up and down um, if you're in a sharded model uh, with the number of nodes. Um, obviously, it does mean that you're, you have to make sure that your data still fits. So if you want to scale down the number of nodes, um, then make sure that the number of shards of your collection still fits and things like that. Great. So the question that we had many times is what happens during the scale? Is my um, cluster still available? And the answer is yes, um, it is a cluster. So we do that one step at a time. And there is always um, uh, a piece of the cluster uh, still available. And because we uh, force um, that the replication factor uh, is always higher than zero, uh, we make sure that your data is uh, always available to you. Um, it can be that during um, a scaling operation, we have to change memory, which means, or change memory or disk, which means that we temporarily have to stop individual service of the cluster. It obviously means something for the performance of your cluster at that time, but overall the data is still available. All right, uh, another question, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong about, uh, we try to answer it myself. So the question is if uh, there will be a possibility, a possibility for cross-region replication. Um, yes, we're working on that. Um, as uh, Eva already said, um, that uh, data center to data center replication is on our list. So uh, this cross-region replication um, will then be possible with a data center to data center replication. Um, maybe Eva can give us a first idea when uh, when when we could um, think about that. Uh, I think it will be maybe Q1 2020. Um, I don't have an ETA for that yet. Um, um, just one tiny um, addition to what you already mentioned. Um, it will be a replication of um, entire clusters. Um, so. We know that some uh, databases out there allow you to span a single cluster over multiple regions. Um, usually that results in rather poor um, uh, write performance. Um, for the OrangoDB cluster topology, it is um, the, the cluster itself has a synchronous replication and uh, therefore we spin it up in a single region. Um, but we want to make it easy with data center to data center 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 synchronization, sorry, um, to just hook up to deployments and say, okay, now synchronize everything or individual databases um, for that matter. All right, great. Any more questions of you guys? Still have a few minutes left. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's another question. Will that uh, will... chat? I see. Uh, okay, perfect. Are there any chances that the list of official drivers will be extended? Um, many drivers uh, are buggy and outdated. Um, first of all, uh, let, let me um, inform you that the set of drivers um, is irrespective of uh, whether you use Oasis or not. Um, so any driver that can talk to a normal RMDB uh, version can also talk to Oasis. Um, and um, we will have to uh, forward this question. I am not aware at this time of any um, more official drivers, uh, but I do know that our driver team is very hard at work uh, to make sure that the official drivers are as up to date and as user friendly as possible. But if there are issues there, please submit support uh, issues because uh, we want to hear from you guys what, uh, what the issues are. All right. Um, another question is uh, if uh, the uh, data center to data center replication will be a master master or, um, uh, or a master slave setup. And uh, if it will be um, uh, granu granular replication within a single database. Um. I'm not sure about the second question. Let's start with the first one. Um, data center to data center is a master slave synchronization. Um, at the moment, that is a master slave synchronization aimed at um, two things disaster recovery. Um, so just have a complete shadow of your entire RangDB cluster somewhere else. Um, or also for the um, local av availability of your data. Um, there are um, ideas, but I'm not aware of any time frame yet to make it more granular and do it on a per database uh, level. Um, another question is uh, if we have an uptime SLA. Um, no, we don't have an uptime SLA. Um, let me explain that. Uh, we run our infrastructure on um, cloud providers, as we have already mentioned uh, many times. And the cloud providers themselves do not give us any uptime SLA whatsoever. Um, so um, as much as we would love to give you an uptime SLA, we cannot because in the end we rely on the infrastructure provided to us by the cloud providers. All right. We do, uh, probably, um, I, I didn't already mention that, but it's important to say that again, is that we set up the region. So we allow you to select a cloud provider in a region. Um, for those familiar with the details of these cloud infrastructures, there is a second, sorry, a third level, which is called the availability zone. We don't allow you to select the availability zone because we are already running um, all our uh, different components um, we're spreading them as much as possible over the different availability zones, uh, therefore trying to maximize uh, or more precise, minimize the risk of uh, failure in case a single availability zone goes down. Okay, so the next one, uh, I think that's more a question for me, um, if we are GDPR compliant. So this is a two-sided question. So on the one hand, uh, the question is if you can build GDPR compliant applications uh, on, uh, on top of uh, Oasis and the answer is a clear yes. So with uh, all the security features uh, starting from encryption on transit, at rest and encrypted backups, a fine-grained uh, access control, you have auditing um, and uh, all the things um, that um, um, the enterprise edition and uh, therefore also um, uh, Oasis provides, allows you to build GDPR compliant applications. Also, uh, for those uh, from the US uh, who will be hit uh, by the um, CCPA regulation getting into effect uh, next year in January in California, um, they uh, are also all set um, on the uh, Oasis organizational uh, side of things. Yes, we're also there, GDPR compliant. We're, um, a um, uh, German, uh, uh, also German-born company, so we know about GDPR, and um, uh, from uh, all sides, we're all set in terms of 
being compliant there. I hope this uh, answered your question. All right. Yeah, there's a one, one very last question left of uh, what the typical price per hour is. Um, uh, I think this is, uh, this is something um, uh, I would really like to motivate you to check, uh, check out uh, why is this a day before you create an, uh, a deployment. You can play around as Eva showed in this presentation um, uh, what, uh, what uh, setup and configuration would, uh, would meet your, your needs. And then you can uh, directly see um, the, um, the hourly price um, for that. Um, we just released today, so uh, in terms of communicate, uh, communicating our, uh, our prices um, uh, even uh, in an even easier way, I think uh, we will um, uh, do a better job there. Um, but uh, at the moment, um, you can already um, have a look at the prices once you play around with the configurations for the different deployment modes and uh, resources that you get. All right. Good. Then I think um, uh, there is one one last question. This is something I actually don't know. So maybe uh, you have uh, you have some some infos there. Um, the question is if we tested the RMDB performance on different providers, and if we have um, uh, maybe an indication if there are uh, any differences between, for example, AWS and uh, and Google Compute. Yes. Uh, good question. We uh, we did test that, of course, and. Um, uh, it's hard to give a um, concrete answer on that without knowing the use case because we found that um, the behavior is uh, highly dependent on your use case. So do you write uh, a lot? Do you do a lot of graph traversal and so on? Um, in terms of pure write performance, read write, literally getting uh, stuff in and out, um, AWS was the clear winner. Um, which was significantly faster than uh, than Google. All right, great. So many questions. Awesome, perfect. Uh, I don't see any further questions. So uh, I would say uh, thank you so much for joining and uh, all the questions and um, sharing your time with us. Uh, thanks a lot, Ewald. Uh, I know you had uh, a couple of really um, yeah, busy days um, until the release today and also today. So thanks a lot for taking the time and, uh, and sharing um, so many details about Oasis and uh, what you and your team uh, created over the past months and um, yeah, years. Yes, and thanks to, uh, to everyone here. And uh, please give it a try and let us know what you, uh, what you think of it. We very much welcome your feedback. Yeah, so everyone who's in the Slack community, we just uh, created a new um, a Slack channel. It's just uh, RNDB Oasis. Um, let us know your feedback there or over the RNDB uh, Oasis web UI. Um, we would really appreciate uh, any feedback, ideas, uh, and um, where it should go in the future. Perfect. Have a nice evening. Thanks for your time. Bye bye. Bye bye.